Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about ways to turn a single character into a full-fledged scene. All right, let's go check it out. Big shout out, by the way, to Ferniclastics, Leah, and also Enraged Angelope uh, from the Discord server who helped with the intro images. Okay, so we have a multi-stage workflow here. I'm gonna zoom out really, really quickly just so you can kind of see it's a kind of really long sort of deal, but we do it in stages. And I have my bookmark set up, so I'm gonna start with bookmark one. And we're going to go through multiple stages here using a few new techniques that we haven't used before. And we're also gonna be leveraging a lot of our existing techniques as well. So we're gonna start out, uh, our first stage here is around character creation. And so on the left-hand side, we have the normal loader. One change though that you'll see in this version is I'm now using the dyno segmenting ability where we were using clip seg before. I find that over and over again, the dyno model is significantly better. And you can check out how to set that up in detail on the last video. Um, okay, and so uh, we have basically the first stage where we're going to create a character. And in this case, I'm creating a uh, werewolf character. Uh, I typically like to put some sort of, you know, standing on so that it doesn't simply crop at the kind of midsection, uh, but we want to see the full character. Um, and really, you'll see the rest of the background won't be used in the future. So it's really good just to pull the whole thing. Now, one of the challenges with creating a character that you're going to be using into a scene is that you'll need multiple angles for that character. And it's a little bit of a pain to try to prompt that same exact character uh, into multiple angles. There are different videos for character consistency, um, and some of them work well, but they're a little bit complex. So instead, we're gonna use a new technique. Um, it's called the zero shot, you know, one, two, three method. Uh, it's a, a new note. And after we have created our character, and just as an FYI, uh, we are, uh, I'm not using LCM in this case, but you could, uh, and we're using the normal settings. And in terms of the model right now, I'm using Bastard Lord, which is the uh, top model right now in the uh, SDXL uh, top 10. And so we're taking this and we're now going to do uh, this new method called stable zero. And it's really only two nodes that are part of a single package. Uh, it's called stable zero one, two, three. So you can load that from your company manager. And the um, when you do that, you're basically going to pipe uh, your image there. Now, before you do that, of course, I don't want to take and rotate around and find different angles for my background. Uh, so I'm going to first remove the background. So I'm basically piping my image, uh, which has the whole scene here, into the remove background. Um, there's a few different remove background nodes uh, available, but I like the one from MTB nodes. Um, it seems to do a very, very good job of pulling just the uh, character or whatever you want out. Uh, it actually works also really well for photorealistic. And you're, you're piping in the image and out comes the RGBA, which includes the alpha. And so the image then is going into this stable one, two, three. So you can see it's kind of piping from here. And so uh, part of that install will include all of the uh, models and other support files. So you don't have to download anything else. Uh, and by default, it will be set up uh, ready to go. Uh, but you basically want to set up this. And then for the image split, um, it's basically taking and creating a, a table of uh, and slicing it up into individual images of what those angles look like. So I've only provided one wolf front facing and it doesn't necessarily by the way have to be front facing um, and if you could see if i'm zooming in it has automatically figured out through you know computer science calculations uh how this wolf should look like from all angles it's really really fascinating now sometimes as you can see it may get a little wonky and that's fine because you know when you're thinking about your scene you have different ways of representing that character in that scene. And, and also if you're doing image to image where you're kind of re-rendering and blending and baking, you know, some of those other items can be fixed, but realistically, 
you have lots of different options to choose for and there's a lot of consistency here as well so from here i kind of liked two images i liked the the main image right because you can see this image is different than all of the variations that have been produced so i like this image which we'll remove the background for and use in our scene and uh, i also liked uh this one as well it's kind of like a uh, kind of a back diagonal view and so uh, i'm using the image selector as we've used in a previous video uh, i like number three one two three and so I'm grabbing that one out as well. So I'm also, because you can see here, uh, I'm removing the background from that one because you can see it has a gray background. And you can see it's a very clean uh, output for that one. And I'm also, again, using the main image that I originally generated as well. And so I have, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I have both of those. And here is another new technique. Uh, obviously, we've been using Use Everywhere. All right, right. So I'm going to zoom back in here use everywhere node, which obviously beams things where you want. But this time we're going to actually use our image and beam our image to the next stage. And this is very valuable because then once you, let's say you have your picture of your wolf and you're gonna use your front wolf, let's say in multiple locations, you can easily beam it to different nodes uh, automatically and you won't have to worry about anything special. So, uh, but we're gonna say, well, how do we do that, right? Because previously when we did our use everywhere, we've actually had to connect, let's say, a model in, and it automatically knew, well, it's just a model, or it's just a VAE, or it's just a clip. Now we're gonna call it something special to designate itself. So in this case, I have my werewolf looking forward, so it's my werewolf underscore front. That's what I called it. And by default, this title regex is dot star. And what we're gonna do, and what you may not realize, is that you can actually rename your input and output. So if I wanted to call this something else, I can just right click that input type and say rename slot. Now in this case, I'm not gonna do that because I'm using it somewhere else and we'll show you that in a second. So we have our front facing werewolf and then we have our back facing werewolf. So in this case, I did the same thing. I piped my image to my anything everywhere and you can see it has the question mark. So make sure you do that node as opposed to the other ones. Uh, title is again the same thing dot star but the input reg right that basically the input name is ww underscore back and so that's going to be useful really soon okay so we are ready for our next stage which is environment creation and so this is simply uh the background creation for our uh scene Right, so I'm just doing as I normally would, have my mile high styler. I'm not doing any special styles this time, but it's gonna be a little bit more in an illustrative format. So thankfully it does that automatically in this case, uh, but obviously you can always style it if you wanted to. Um, just a cliff, you know, over the, over the valleys, spikes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, however, one difference, uh, and actually one thing I want to point out back to, let's go back to our uh, creation here with our, our zero, uh, one, two, three. This uh, first image that's going to be rotated and given different angles, this has to be square, right? So you can't, let's say, use a load image or render a latent that is a different uh, uh, image dimension, right? Like 896 by 1152 or 1344 by 768. It has to be square. So keep it 512 by 512 or 1024 by 1024 because otherwise, the generation of these angles gets really warped and funky and it's good to experiment with but you'll see it's it's quite a bit different okay so we're back to our scene here everything is good so i'm going to be creating a wide large screen sort of format for my epic picture here and so i'm creating a new empty latent image uh that's 1344 by 768 and so i'm going to pipe it in here and so this is a normal render nothing special uh, in this case i also did not do latent consisting model. I just did a, a standard uh, render uh, for the details and that's it. So that's it for stage two. All right, stage three. So now we're going to be in compositing. Now this is just the layering, right, that we have done a little bit in some of the other videos, uh, but we have a few um, little tricks here. Uh, first thing, where did we get our images from, right? This is our, you know, preview bridge. Could have done a load image and done it manually. However, I'm using our use everywhere beaming. And so this was originally, as you know, preview bridge normally just looks for an image. 
Well, I had renamed it to the same thing we had called the uh, uh, werewolf back uh, before. And I did the same thing. I created another preview bridge and did WW werewolf underscore front. And so when I run it, you could see it has the kind of highlight outline of views everywhere. It's beaming those images here automatically. I don't have to drag those connections all the way from other areas of my workflow. And in fact, if I use this multiple times, same deal, right? It's gonna automatically beam it out to whatever I need to do it. But the key piece is the names have to match exactly. So if I spell back incorrectly, uh, it's not gonna beam over. And if I spell front and et cetera, or I miss the underscore, it's also not going to beam correctly. In fact, if you always wanted to check quickly, when you use use everywhere, uh, how things look and where things are connected, um, you can right click and go to show UE links right here in the middle. And when you do it, especially if you have a pretty complex workflow, it may get a little crazy. However, it does show your connection. So if I zoom way out here, you can see that it is actually connecting to my, uh, my front and my back over here. So it's good. But again, since it gets a little crazy, I'd like to actually keep it off. Um, so that it's easy to, to understand. But that's how it's beaming in here. So uh, I've beamed in my back and my front image. And um, uh, in my final scene, right, so if I go back to my scene for a second, right, I'm going to have my back image wolf over here. Uh, it's right now pointing the wrong direction, right? It's, it's pointing left, and I want it to point right, like it's walking up the stairs. Uh, and same thing, I'm going to be putting this other wolf kind of carved into the mountainside, uh, right now it's looking kind of to the right and I want it to go to the left. So I'm kind of flip it for both of those images. So in this case, um, there's uh, several different nodes that are available for flipping images, but uh, I like this one. It's really, really quick. It's called, it's from the Comfy UI Essentials uh, custom node pack. And it's just called image flip, but you can actually flip it uh, horizontally or vertically or um, both. So it's, it's kind of a little bit more powerful than let's just say a standard flip. Um, but it's pretty easy as well. You're just piping in the image, saying what you want to do with it, and then and bringing it out. So that's all good. Now, uh, the way I, I'm going to zoom out here, the way that I laid this out is I wanted to first select automatically my werewolf, and then I wanted to layer it into my shot, and then I want to do it multiple times, right? So I'm going to first layer my werewolf back, as you can see here, and right now you can see nothing is laid out here. And then secondly, I'm gonna layer in my second wolf and I'm going to bring it in here. And I even added a little bit of opacity. Uh, I found that that was best for it to kind of incorporate when I start to do my blending and my baking uh, of my final scene. So we're gonna talk about each of these, uh, but first let's talk about our uh, dino uh, masking. So all I did literally was pipe to my flip image, right? into my dino uh, segment anything masker and I searched for werewolf I changed I kept the threshold the same uh, and I did it twice and you may ask well why would you create it twice well of course it's two separate images and it only takes one input at a time so unfortunately there's no way I could just simply pipe in every single one of my images to a single node here um, I have to actually do it twice however because I am beaming my model right i'm setting that up in my loader i don't have to load my model twice so that's great from a memory efficiency perspective um, that you may want to incorporate in the future so you don't have to keep loading multiple sam models or multiple you know dino models as you're going along so this is my uh, selector um, i basically have my base image which is my scene from my uh, epic scene that I've created and my overlay image is now my flipped version uh, of my uh, werewolf. And additionally, then I'm adding my mask, which I have to flip. Remember how from previous videos, sometimes you have to kind of flip the mask so it doesn't uh, select just the background and not your foreground. So same thing here. So we're basically doing the mask we're piping in and the uh, original image for our base. And then finally our werewolf for the overlay. So we're doing that first time here. And so you can see here's the result with the werewolf on the uh, on the stairs. And then additionally, I'm then piping that resulting image into the overlay again. And now that's our new base, right? And from there, we're gonna now similarly take our wolf, our big wolf, 
that we're going to put into our picture and we're going to do that now uh, just as we had on the previous videos we're going to you can offset it right so you want to kind of line it up to where you want it to be and scale it so i had to make my werewolf in this case a little bit smaller my werewolf a little bit bigger here so that if i zoom in here you can see i'm going to carve my werewolf into the mountainside um, and so that is the end of that stage, right? So that is stage three. So stage four is our find out stage. It's our image and image kind of blending mode. And uh, similar to other videos, we don't have to fully detail out the prompt the way we did before. You just have to give it kind of general guidance because you've already set kind of your overall canvas together with the things you've overlaid. So we basically have just the werewolf facing away with a shaggy tail walking up to the cliff bridge and there's a werewolf mountain carving with mysterious clouds etc um, and that's it right so over here you're going to play with the denoise level as we have in previous videos right if you do a little too high you'll see that it's going to uh, be too much werewolf or it may not look realistically carved into the mountain etc um, and if you do too little of course then it'll still seem a little layered and won't seem baked in so you have to play with that a little bit um, but the result you can see is really great, right? Got some really good uh, incorporation into the mountainside, even some glowing eyes. And also you can see a little bit of shadow as well as the uh, wolf walking up the, the way. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, as always, please feel free to share, like, subscribe. Uh, and also uh, we will talk to you soon.